I have no idea what I'm going to title this video, probably something along the lines of DeAndre Aiden is, I don't know, really good, but not great, and that's okay, something like that. So before I actually start talking, I want to have a disclaimer that this is not a hate video. He is really good, and I'm going to explain why he's really good, but also, in addition to him being really good, I'm going to share my thoughts about why he can be a star, but not a superstar. But in the grand scheme of things, why that's okay and why that's totally fine and we just got to keep him moving right so first thing i want to talk about is what deandre aiden does good especially in the system of the phoenix suns if you've been living under a rock deandre aiden is the 22 year old starting center former first overall pick for the phoenix suns who are currently in the nba finals and as of the recording of this video the suns are actually down two to three heading to a game six in Milwaukee. Now, a quick overview of what DeAndre Aiden's body of work has been. In the regular season, he put up 14.4 points per game, 10.5 rebounds, 1.4 assists, in about 30 minutes per game. In the playoffs, he ramped up these numbers, 36 minutes per game, 16 points, nine rebounds, sorry, pardon me, 12 rebounds, and one assist. That's just an overview of his body of work. Now, what does he do good? And there's a lot of things he does good. Number one is, of course, he's a great rebounder, which is critical in the system of Phoenix because Phoenix is a pretty small lineup with not much rebounding. He is the crux of all the rebounding that the Phoenix Suns does. Like, Chris Paul doesn't really rebound. Devin Booker, not really. Mikhail Bridges, not really. Jay Crowder, not really. And they don't really have a backup big. I mean, Frank Kaminsky is there. He's kind of whatever. And then Dario Saric got hurt, right? So he's critical to keeping the Phoenix Suns alive. Like, in this series, the Milwaukee Bucks have been killing the Suns on the rebounding side of the game. And if DeAndre Aiden wasn't there, they would probably get swept because they would just have so many more second chance points, right? Number two, what else he does good? He's improving. In his rookie season, he was pretty solid. You know, like he had some defensive slips, some, you know, like really weird turnovers, just like rookie things, right? And he actually heavily regressed his second year. Even though he put up more points, he had a lower field goal percentage. He had some off-court issues. And it looked like DeAndre Aiden wasn't heading towards the right direction. And then all of a sudden, he got a lot better, right? He improved. Something I noticed is his defensive positioning is a lot better. Especially last year, he just looked very confused about where he was supposed to be. This year, he's been a lot better defensively, which is proven especially by him guarding Giannis. There's times where Giannis just can't get past him. He's just too big. And sure, being big is important, but also where you're standing, how you're moving your feet, how you're moving laterally and horizontally, all that has improved in DeAndre Aiden's game. And to add on to that, you know, he's very athletic. I think people forget just how big and how athletic DeAndre Aiden is. This guy is 6'11", 250 pounds. And as shown by, what was it, the game two, game two, game three, something like that, against the Clippers when he caught that last second lob. This guy is very athletic, very good at rebounding, much better defensively and offensively, and plays a huge role in what the Phoenix Suns do, right? So DeAndre Aiden is good, and I think he's only going to get better. Now, the second part of this video is me explaining why, although he's good and he could be a star, I don't see him in the near future, in the near, like it's possible he expands his game and I really hope he does, but in like the next two, three years, I don't see him being a super superstar. And the reason why is because of the way he, how do I put this? His role in the offense, specifically the percentage of his field goals that are assisted. What do I mean? So this is on basketball reference. You could just search it up. You just scroll down to the shooting section. Let me just go over some quick numbers about DeAndre Aiden's offensive arsenal. So DeAndre Aiden on offense in 2020 and 2021 
71% of his field goals were assisted. 71%. In his career, 72% were assisted. Let me just go over some other centers and see how many of their field goals were assisted. Bam Adebayo, 65% were assisted. And then we hit the big guns, Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic. For Joel Embiid, 42% of his field goals were assisted, only 42. And Nikola Jokic, only 48% were assisted. What does this mean? This means two things. The first thing that this means is Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic can create their own shots. That's what superstars are. Superstars are guys who can get a bucket by themselves when it matters the most. And Joel Embiid and Jokic are superstars, and one of the indications are the field goals assisted. Only 42% from Embiid, 48% from Jokic. They can create their own shot in the post, their own shot in the mid-range, and sometimes their own shot in the three. DeAndre Aiden doesn't really have that skill set. Most of his shots are from pick and rolls, lobs, passes, etc. And like, like I'm going to explain later, like there's nothing inherently wrong with that because that's his role. And it's amazing that he found his role within a successful Suns offense. However, when you look at it in just a black hole, at the end of the day, most of his field goals are still assisted, and that kind of takes away his ability to be a superstar. And the second important part of this statistic about field goals being assisted is that makes you dependent on your point guard. And I think this is pretty clear, actually. Like, in the first two years, there was really no good point guard for the Suns. I mean, Ricky Rubio's kind of whatever. And that's when DeAndre Aiden really struggled. Like, sure on the stat sheet he was good but in terms of impact he wasn't a high impact player but the moment you add Chris Paul an elite point guard who is elite at giving shot opportunities to his centers that's when DeAndre Aiden shines which is awesome I'm so happy that this connection on both like on the court and off the court is clicking for them too, but that still makes him reliant on Chris Paul, which is really clear when you watch the game. Like whenever Chris Paul struggles, DeAndre Aiden struggles too. I think the perfect example is like game, what was it? Like game, game, I think it was game four when Chris Paul put up like 10 points or something. Let me check real quick. Yes, it's game four. He had 10 points, 7 assists, really struggled. And I think that same game, DeAndre Aiden also struggled. He got like 6 points, whatever. Now, if you compare that to game 1 or game 2, when Chris Paul really went off and got going, then DeAndre Aiden also went, went off too, right? You see how these two players are linked? And because they're linked, that kind of limits the ability of DeAndre Aiden to be a superstar because of... The field, you know, the percentage of field goals assisted, right? And I guess my third point is there's a reason why we've never seen DeAndre Aiden get like 30 point games or 40 point games like Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid regularly get because you just can't score that many points when you're reliant on a point guard. It's kind of hard for you to be reliant on a player and get a consistent 20, 25, 30, 35 point night type performance, right? Which is why we don't really see that from DeAndre Aiden, which is why I like him a lot. I think he's great. He's perfect for the team. But if you take him into a vacuum, he's kind of not a superstar level player. I hope that made sense. This is just kind of something I've been thinking about. And I kind of... Went on basketball reference, looked at the stats, confirmed about what I was thinking about. And this, you know, the percentage of field goals that are assisted kind of back up my thoughts about the impact DeAndre Aiden has on the team and his ultimate standing in the league compared to other centers. Now, the last thing I want to end this video on about is, that, you know, that, like there's a lot of negativity in NBA Twitter about the finals, about specific players, etc. And I don't want my take to be seen as negative because ultimately it's okay. Your role is your role. And DeAndre Aiden is thriving. He is awesome in his role. 
And also, he's 22. He can always expand his game, right? Like, I don't want to trap a player in who's only a couple years older than me and say he can never expand his game. He probably will. And honestly, I expect his percentage of field goal assisted to go down as, as his career goes on, as he improves his post moves, as he improves his shot, etc. And then hopefully, maybe when he enters his prime, he can become a superstar like Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic.